This show is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. Without a healthy mind, being happy is hard. Visit betterhelp.com slash kind of funny and see if online therapy is for you. What's up and welcome back to the Kind of Funny Games cast. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by one of the coolest dudes in video games, Greg Miller. Hello, how are you, Tim? Fantastic. The Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. 77.2 degrees in my room right now. Feeling good, feeling toasty. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Okay. It's real hot today. I'm not liking that. It looks cold outside, but I am yep. also hot inside. It's not. I not hate being really tricked. Good. You know I hate mm-hmm. being tricked, Tim. Mm-hmm. No one likes a trickster. Mm-hmm. And speaking of tricksters, make it his return to the kind of funny games cast the one the only jared petty wow okie dokie back from the dead uh after my long dark betrayal thank y'all for welcoming me <laughs> it feels so great being here yeah it is it, it's so crazy to think of how long it's been since you were a core member of the kind of funny games cast because you're not even the last person to have been with us an entire <laughs> year and then leave us that's how uh, imran <laughs> khan took that up but if y'all weren't so terrible to all your employees obviously we wouldn't exactly. keep leaving i mean it's, it's, Thank just, you, it's just like a, a continuing rotate exactly andy you know how it is why are mm-hmm. you hanging around you can do better mm-hmm. than these guys mm-hmm. i'm oh, gonna no, have a good scared. novel once my time is done, i'm gonna have a good novel good biography here mm-hmm. Uh, can you get Craig? Can you imagine Andy having to write a novel? <laughs> well, first off, novels are usually fiction, aren't they? So <laughs> I don't know what to find. There will be some fiction I love it. sprinkled in just to keep it interesting. <laughs> just to keep it interesting, yeah. like all the good things Nick uh-huh. does. Uh, but Jared Petty, where have you been? What have you been up to? What are you about to do? Well, I was uh, doing copywriting at Google. I'm not doing that anymore. Uh, and I'm headed to Limited Run Games, uh, which, uh, yeah, 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 you may be familiar with. It makes uh, physical media for uh, digital games, indies, and uh, retro stuff, and all kinds of other wonderful projects. Also, they make books, which is very exciting for me. And uh, I get to be a part of all that. I'm starting there next month. And uh, in the meantime, I still do the Top 100 Games podcast, which you can find on all your podcast services. And you should, because it's a fun little thing. Different guests every week. And uh, some of the people on this podcast have already been there. Some have not. I need to hit that Andy Cortez up. I need to hit that Tim Gettys up. That's right. Oh, I bet no, you did it. Smash Brothers. You did Smash yeah. Brothers. Wait, yeah. you raised your hand. I say, anyway, yeah. So well, it applies can, both I'm ways. It cuts both ways, you know. I'm next, Jared. But the day that you need me, uh, I got a lot of stuff happening that day. So we'll we'll figure something out. We'll figure yeah, something I, out. I, I, I feel really lucky. I moved. Uh, I'm on the East Coast now. I'm in my big empty apartment in North Carolina. The the wall behind me is not decorative. It is uh, <laughs> it is that none of my furniture has arrived from California and won't for quite some time. So uh, I'm sleeping on a mattress on the floor, and we have some folding chairs, and things are good. But it's beautiful here. Uh, Angie likes it. I like it. I'm excited about starting uh, in my new gig, and I am bonafide thrilled to be here um i love y'all and it was kind of you to welcome me back for a visit uh i have missed this very much working for you is the most fun i've ever had doing anything so thank you i love you so much jared and i i just want to say there is no job i could have been more stoked to see you land than limited run games where like i saw the tweet and i'm like this is the coolest most jared petty ass thing i've ever heard so congratulations i'm very excited to see uh what you ended up doing jeremy Parrish is over there too right Jeremy's my new boss. Uh, that yeah. is, it's yeah. too perfect. <laughs> like that just adds up. Like it's not fair. Uh, I love it though. Very, very, very cool stuff. So everyone, stay tuned to see what happens from that. But for now, we got him right here on the Kind of Funny Games Cast, where each and every week we get together to talk about video games and all the things that we love about them. You can get it on YouTube.com/slash Kind of Funny Games or RoosterTeeth.com. If you want to get it as a podcast, just search your podcast services for Kind of Funny Games Cast, and we'll be right there for you. If you wanted to get the show ad free and you wanted to watch live as we recorded, and if you want to get the exclusive post show, you're gonna have to go to patreon.com slash kind of funny games just like our patreon producers tyler ross the kind of funny destiny 2 pc clan julian the gluten-free gamer alex j sandoval techie haas james hastings casey andrew elliot and brian ward have all done we appreciate you all and your money so very very much but if you don't have money to throw our way and you're just out there buying video games you could use our epic creator code kind of funny on all epic store and epic in-game purchases like on rocket league fortnite v bucks all that stuff to help support kind of funny so any money you're putting towards the games on the epic game store percentage of it's going straight to us so thank you for that use the code kind of funny uh today we're brought to you by purple mattress and fitbod but 
We'll have to talk about that later because for now, Andy Cortez, me and you need to talk about some Halo Infinite tech flight number two, another weekend in the books. How many hours are you in and where's your head at? This was the best weekend of my life, Tim. Oh, my God. I'm not I don't want to overstate it and overrate it, but it was the best weekend of my life. I, I I can't even explain the amount of anticipation and and excitedness that I was feeling the night before, because what we did was we streamed me and Mike streamed on our channels on Friday night. And we knew Saturday morning, the next uh, the servers open again at 10 a.m. Pacific time. We were going to do a stream on Kind of Funny Saturday morning, like a little bonus stream. Why not? It's Halo. It's exciting. And I couldn't sleep that night. I, I like I woke up several times like at five in the morning being like, oh, my God, it's still five. Come on. Like I need to like sleep <laughs> faster somehow. Um, it was incredible. I had so much damn fun playing against uh, actual other players, uh, other Halo players, because for the first flight, 99 percent of it was against bots. And then for a limited kind of like two hour block. They let you play against other players, but this time it was all matchmaking. Uh, it was an absolute blast negatives. I feel like uh, performance still, you know, there's some left to be desired there uh, frame rate. I'm not getting what I should be getting on my PC, um, but that's fine. I hope they figure out ways to tune all of that, but God damn, it was an absolute blast. They added capture the flag and me, Tim, Kevin, and Mike had one of the most memorable, like I I flashed back to being 16 again and Amen, dude. We were playing a CTF game and they had the flag. Go get the, go get the guy with the flag. And it was just nonstop excitement. It was just pure joy. And yeah, again, this was some of the most fun playing video games I've had in a long damn time. I am right there with you. And you bring it up the flashbacks of being 16. We often talk about Halo and like the the memories we have of it and the experiences we had with it being like for a lot of console gamers, their first major multiplayer experience on, on that level. Like we all have our N64 memories, but like Halo really like took it up a notch, especially with things like Capture the Flag. And when we saw the E3 trailer this year, we we felt it. We knew the hype was there. We're like, oh my God, they, they, they're nailing the nostalgia pole vibes there. Playing it this weekend though, and having that Capture the Flag experience, having that match that we did as our first Capture the Flag match that they they let us do and, and winning, you know, and I th- feel like each one of us got equal play in terms of being a part of the match working together as a team you're right like they did it they they gave us that feeling again but it's modern and it's updated and it feels like a first person shooter should feel in 2021 and i had such a blast playing with you guys i actually feel like the way they did the tech flights where it was like limited time throughout the day different sections and they would add different modes and add different maps and things it actually made it a lot of fun to be able to be excited for what's happening next so when a new thing was dropped a new uh game mode or whatever we're like oh what is strongholds what's going on here and uh uh what was really fun about the strongholds uh game mode in particular is essentially there's three uh points of interest on the map a b and c and every there's two different teams and they're trying whoever has control of at least two of them at any one time is getting points um it's like king of the hill type stuff and what was fun about it is when we first started we didn't realize you needed two out of three so we were just kind of running amok all of us crazy just trying to get as many as possible but that meant that well, oftentimes we would only have control of one and we're like, what the hell? Why aren't we getting points for this? The moment it was clear, oh, we need to get two. We started working like a well-oiled machine. We were co- doing call outs. Like, and again, this isn't a bunch of pro gamers playing. We only had two pros with Andy and Mike. We also had the dipshits, me and Kevin. And we were. <laughs> this is Kevin's first time playing Halo, but we were able to kind of like hear the call outs, understand what's going on. And it, it, with the way that the game set up, it's so simple of go get A go get B, go get C. It's not necessarily go to rockets, go to the tower, go to batteries, whatever. Those call-outs were happening as well, and over time, you kind of get to them. But I think that the objective-based multiplayer modes in halo have always been one of the strong suits and i think that what they got going with infinite is incredibly special and they are making it accessible to people um whether they have prior halo knowledge or jumping in for the first time and that kind of fun of discovery of of getting to understand how to play and granted strongholds might have been in other uh, versions of the game i'm not saying it wasn't i'm saying i haven't experienced it so that was a, a fun thing to kind of 
have with all of you guys. Um, and I had such a blast. I unfortunately had to miss the last uh, bit of it, so I didn't get to do any of the vehicles, and I was really looking forward to it. So, Andy, can you tell me about that a little bit? Oh, my gosh. Yeah, so the fourth map that they added was Behemoth, and it is... It is such a classic looking Halo map. It is sort of this desert biome with gigantic forerunner structures. It's like what you want to see out of a Halo level. And it's got a really nice sense of symmetry and it's a really big level. I think the biggest one that we've played in so far in Halo, where all the other ones have been kind of this more of the arena type shooter that you're used to, usually either indoors or if you're outdoors, it's more small scale. This one, they introduced Behemoth and you could play either slayer on it or capture the flag and it is large enough to feel like perfect for that sort of capture the flag map where um there are little vents that shoot you off on either side you you end up like you know vaulting yourself to the other side of the level in the middle there are two snipers that spawn on on either side it is so um it is so symmetrical in a way that you kind of need for a map that's going to be Primarily, I'd, I'd assume a CTF map. This is like exactly what they were looking to get. Um, it is so much fun. It's large enough to feel um, like you got space to kind of work around and sneak around if you are trying to go sneak and get a flag. But it's also not too daunting enough, I don't think, to feel like... I, I remember the first time playing on Waterworks back in the day, I believe in Halo 2, and just feeling like, God damn, this is too big of a map. I don't know what the hell is happening here. When there's only four players and you're playing 4v4, it just feels really good. And I think the the rhythm and the sort of rotations you have on these larger maps are working out perfectly. It's got a really nice sort of outdoor area for long sight lines. Or if you want to be sneaky and go down low, you have those areas to sort of um, sneak around in as well. I thought like Behemoth is probably... Each time they release a new map, it's like, this is my new favorite map. And Behemoth, Behemoth immediately sort of became that because of... We're adding back that sort of sandbox that we all love about Halo and the amount of times that the enemy team is coming to our side and they're in a warthog and I stick them with a grenade and the boom, it just fucking explodes and goes flying. And those moments of fun are just hilarious. Oh, right here. This wasn't uh, this moment that you're watching right here. Maybe what happened here? Pro, this uh, yeah, pro gamer. Right here. <laughs> wasn't the most wasn't the most pro. Uh, was Kevin driving moment. right here? Was Kevin driving right here? No, that was just me in a car. I was just testing out the cars against bots, and I got kind of stuck gotcha. in some geometry. Gotcha. Yeah, testing it against trees too. Apparently, yeah, yeah. yeah just trying to see. I, I was testing out the torque and the acceleration. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I mean this this level was a lot of fun, Tim. And I know you didn't get to do any. Did you play on it at all, or was it just? No. Oh, I didn't really? get this one at all, dude. No. Oh shit. That's really unfortunate. Because what you gotta do is like when I hopped online, I hopped in just the uh, right now when in these early fights, they allow you to just kind of explore the level and play against bots, and there's no score being kept. You're just kind of playing with three other bots on your team and you're playing against four bots. And you could just kind of explore the level. You could set what weapons you want to start off with, you can set what sort of vehicles you want, you can set invincibility and stuff so it's kind of a way to just kind of explore the level and check it out um and that's what i was doing before the whole crew signed online but man again i this is some of the most fun i've had playing video games and i got a couple replies from people like yeah but what does it have to offer right like what what differentiates this from the call of duties and the war zones and stuff and i really just think it is that sandbox sort of physics i feel like the physics in halo are so much more pronounced in other shooters where like when if you put a shitload of bombs in front of a car it's going to explode and react in a way that you would kind of expect it to it's not going to give you some sort of pre uh pre-rendered animation or anything like that like things are going to happen in a way that feel almost breath of the wild like when you're just kind of fucking around with weird kind of oh if i put a bomb here and i drive here how's that going to react or whatever and the amount of fun that you can have launching vehicles through the those shoots on the side that sort of launched to the other side of the map. It's just, it's pure fun, man. And I had an absolute blast this weekend. And this yeah. next weekend, we are five days away from Big Team Battle, Tim. Hell yeah. And we're going to be streaming twitch.tv slash kind of funny games on uh, Friday. Big Team Battle, trying to get as many people involved as possible. Very excited about that. Uh, Barrett, I sent uh, a clip from Khalif uh, doing some of the stuff that Andy's talking about, if you could bring up, because this is just freaking incredible <laughs> of all the physics and stuff. Jack also, and Bear, sorry, sorry almost for the, dying. the chat who got uh, an ad music thing, to, just a heads up. 
but the the almost death of falling off this cliff in the vehicle but then using the grapple hook to pull himself back to the level. It's like, are you serious? Like that is so freaking cool and so crazy. And like, that's the type of stuff that is brand new to Halo Infinite. But the fun of that is what Halo's always been. It is playing with the physics. It is what Andy's talking about. Of uh, Things kind of react the way you expect them to. So that's where like rocket jump and all that stuff. It's like the origin was just fucking around in Halo or like jumping with the, the energy sword and like the way that you target onto enemies, allowing yourself to like fly across the map. So much damn fun. And I, I love the new maps. And that is something that I've always been a little scared of going into this where, you know me, guys, I'm a nostalgic guy. And it's like, where's my blood goals? Where's my battle creek? You just where, want like, the old I, shit. I just want the old shit. I just want it to feel and look like I remember. Like, that's really all I want. And with this so far, these three different maps that we've had are not old maps, but they feel like old maps. And that is like the best compliment I could give Halo Infinite is they have so far nailed the feel, nailed the vibe of all this stuff. There's still a couple weapons that I don't truly understand, um, but that's just because I'm so used to the old weapons and I know them in and out. Uh, but that's fun. That's exciting. And I can't wait to, to get back to playing this. And I can't they wait for the added. day that we can just play whatever the hell we want. Absolutely. Yeah, they also added a new item called the Repulsor. And these items that get equipped and they are sort of your not your grenade but the other thing that you have <laughs> and and so far that's been a, the grapple hook is one of those things you can pick up or you can throw down a shield that kind of gets deployed in front of you to protect you from oncoming uh shots or whatever but this new thing called the repulsor um you essentially have it on your hand and if somebody throws a grenade at you you can repulse the grenade back to them or you can knock people off of levels and I ended up having one of those moments in the game where, well, we, <laughs> our whole squad, it's somewhere in that video that Barrett had up earlier, but our whole squad got totally baited into one guy just sitting in a corner as we all went and got repulsed off the level, off the map. But the good thing about these, these little items are consumables. They aren't anything that you start off with. They aren't um, something that you can add in your loadout for any of these sort of matchmaking games. There are things you can pick up and they have a finite uh, amount of uses and then they they end or whatever. And You can um, run around the map and pick up a force push cannon. And that's it, fantastic. Exactly. Yes, that's exactly, fantastic. exactly. I put I put it in, in there in assets. I think it's like near the near the end of it or whatever, um, near the end of that video. But the the amount of fun that you can have with it, and we've seen um I'm sorry, did somebody talk to me or was that in the video? My bad. Um, I thought Barrett was talking to my ear. Um, but we've seen other moments where people are using the repulsors to knock off um to knock off vehicles completely. Like their vehicles will be uh driving near the edge of whatever level it is. And if you're hiding in the right spot and repulse them, you see the whole the whole thing just fucking fly off. Um and if you can fast forward like towards the late the latter third of the video, yeah, like, this is this is kind of it right here. I'm kind of waiting around. And I try to knock him and I don't quite get him off the level. And there's a cooldown on it. So I kind of I'm pure panic mode right now. But just the amount of fun that you can have fucking around with people and knocking them off the level. My dude, my head was hurting from the amount of laughter that I that we were having over that whole weekend. And then Tim, like after we had that morning stream and then I then took a nap, streamed again at night. And I was like, dude, I'm fucking exhausted. I feel like I'm at a convention right now. <laughs> yeah, totally, <laughs> totally. <laughs> it, it was great. It was a lot of fun. And we, I could talk about this for hours, but we'll wait for the next, uh, the next flight to come through Hell this Thursday. Yes. So, Andy, me and you have been pl having a lot of fun playing Halo this weekend. Something tells me that Jared Petty was not playing Halo Infinite. Instead, he was having a party of his own with ActRaiser Renaissance. And a little surprise twist here. Greg Miller has also been dabbling in wow. the ActRaiser. So Whoa. I want to hear some thoughts. But Jared, I've, I haven't heard your voice in way too long. Let's start with you. What's up with ActRaiser Renaissance? You know, I it, shocking. It comes out of nowhere. Nobody cared about ActRaiser for, for the last 20 five years just like this game that, that from 1991 and we're like oh okay that was great and then it's gone they had a crappy sequel and then it's forgotten like so many square enix properties and suddenly like oh by the way we remade act racer and it's available today and of course because that's a nintendo direct where it's always mm -hmm. feast or famine it's like either we're going to give you we're going to give you an ekg that you plug into your wii or we're going to give you like act racer today uh, that that's how they work act racer is a very simple game it's a side-scrolling kind of beat-em-up platformer 
connected to SimCity. SimCity parts feed into the side-scrolling parts and make you more powerful if you play them well. And the side-scrolling parts feed into the SimCity parts and make you more powerful. It's a lot like Persona Social Links in a much more primitive way, where whatever you do during the social by day helps you in the dungeoneering and vice versa. That's what makes it neat. You're God. You got beat up a long time ago. You've been asleep a long time. You'll wake up. Satan's taken over the world, and now you got to help people rebuild. I had a and nickel. That's the game. What's that? I said, if I had a nickel. Yeah, if you had a nickel, exactly. It it is a primitive, fairly simple game that there's just something about it. It it clicks. Uh, there's nothing quite like it. I, I feel like it's a game that's really um, not just not just well set up for a remake or a remaster, but a sequel or at least a spiritual successor of some kind. That and but seeing it remade was shocking. This is one of those like, oh, by the way, Metroid's Dread exists moments for uber nerds. Now that's me talking. I'm really interested. Greg Miller's playing this for the first time. Mitch Dyer, my friend, loves to talk about this game. This is one of my favorite games. Chris Kohler loves this game. I, Greg, what's it been like for you playing it now? fascinating is what it's been uh yeah you nailed it uh you know i remember back in the day at ign we did uh you know what's your favorite game of all time we did a series on it of videos where i interviewed uh the staff and when mitch came up he said act racer and he said exactly everything you said right it is sim city mashed up with a beat em up 2d platform or whatever you want to call it right of going across and fighting everything and he knew and i think most of the audience knows what a big sim city fan i am and that always had me excited but it never gave me enough of a push to go dig it out to go do the thing old game is old would i ever you know really want to go chase that with so much other stuff going on and so at the nintendo direct when they announced this i was like oh my god this is perfect obviously like uh, a chance to jump in uh and see this with a modern set of eyes on it and some of the stuff they have done to it and changed which of course i don't know but i know they've done here and there even what barrett just showed there right talking about saves and difficulties and stuff like that like more modern sensibilities applied to it and so when i downloaded it on playstation uh you know it sat there for a couple days and then over the weekend yeah i was like i sat down on the couch and booted it up and when i got to you know you start off as the god pretty much right of like okay cool you now need to fight your way out right you fight this first section in playing that my heart didn't sink, but I was like, oh, okay. It's it's going to be, it's this kind of, you know, scroll to the side, beat up the boss, and then, okay, like, that's what the gameplay is going to be. I, I don't see me sticking with this for a long time. And then I popped out uh, of after beating the boss, and then, you know, you get thrown into the city building section of it, and that's when it starts unlocking and showing you this, and here's how your miracles work, all right? And here's how, you know, they're, your guy, you're, you know, paving the roads for them, or telling them which direction to go with the roads then they're building their own things but you know their fields are giving you health and then now there's this angel that you're using to go over the overworld map to shoot the demons that are coming out of the holes but when the demons come out of the holes you can send your people to the holes and then you go down and fight and i was like this is fucking awesome like this (laughs) i'm like this is fucking awesome and again i'm i'm lucky i know there's been uh, a push and pull in the act raiser community of i guess they added in this tower defense stuff now which wasn't and jared tell me if i'm talking out of turn this is just from the reviews i've read wasn't there initially and so when you're on that overworld map you I have control of the angel you are fighting off the demons that are coming out of the holes and you have a hero for the town and every section has their own hero when eventually you get to a certain point you know the demons make an assault the horde makes an assault and you have to do the tower defense thing of using your resources to build up these outposts to defend things that are going that way and so i like tower defense to a degree uh usually when i'm playing something like a pixel junk monsters those later levels were would be when i was like all right you know what i've i've played this for 15 minutes here and i just failed on the last guy i can't do this again uh early on, i'm su- i'm only an hour and a half into this game uh Early on, I've not had that problem. I actually enjoy the tower defense of it, but it's because I was afraid the action go whack everything with my giant sword was going to be the gameplay, when in reality, it it does seem, at least in this hour and a half, the overworld map and leading your community and, you know, your... your, uh, congregation the people who worship you talking to you and asking you to do things for them i'm like this is such a cool way to do sim city you know what i mean of before it had been always you have to come up with your own narrative to a degree of what kind of mayor you're going to be and how you're going to go but to have this god there to have the you know your angel go down and yell at the uh you know uh, hero of your city when he starts talking shit about you like i'm having a great time with it i'm really shocked that i am I, not that i thought it was overblown but i was like oh i don't know how this will hold up for me in 2021 with no legacy for what came before jared it's so funny because this is also this has always been the game that you heard about as 
your podcaster's favorite game but you <laughs> like but this is totally the game that i have never as a kid i never saw it on a shelf anywhere okay. i never saw it at best buy or at any rental spots so to me it was always this sort of mythological does it really exist i'm sure it does but people say that it's great and so for me it's that i am completely shocked that it's that it's back do you think that it has held up to your standard or, or at least of what you remember it being I like the port a lot. Uh, I have problems with it. Everybody, here's the problem with bringing an old game back. You know, unless you do it, unless you just hit every beat, old guys like me are going to gripe about something or another. But I, I want to start with I really like the port remaster. It is fugly. Um, I, I, the old game's beautiful. Yes, the retro way. The new one, it's not that the, the graphics are bad. It's that the art style matching isn't great. The foregrounds and backgrounds don't blend well. Some people are way more upset about that than I am. Uh, I'm fine with it. I can live with it because some of the, the quality of life improvements, I think, make up for it. And the, I really do think they kind of nailed it. And it, hearing Greg talk about this, the fact that he was able to experience it for the first time and really enjoy it, especially with old game old, thrills me. Um, I think that there's a very unique subgenre of video game, things like XCOM, where my tactical mm -hmm. section feeds my base building and my base building feeds my tactical section, where you have two games that make each other better. They're greater than the sum of their parts. Act Razor is one of the very first games to ever do that, and I think it set the template. And I think a lot of people, that arc is so compelling that in a way its simplicity makes it more compelling. Um, there's not too much to the town building. And I agree with Greg that, that it, the SimCity part is the core of the game. The fact that the SimCity part makes your god tougher when you do have to hit things with your sword. That's awesome. Question for you, Jared, just to make sure I understand. The SimCity part of it, it never gets to, I'm putting down this, not, for a better, lack of a better term, because a police station, a fire station, a school, or whatever. I'm telling them where to go. They pave out the roads, and then they build their own things that then benefit me, right? Yeah, it's extremely simple. Just making um, sure I understood it, yeah. If it's like the old game, eventually you're actually going to have to blow up their huts to improve their buildings. Uh, they may have taken that out in this one. Well, I mean, um, that is part of it, too, we haven't touched on, right? Is that, you know, on top of your angel you're controlling on the over map, on top of, you know, sending your guy around on the overworld, there's also then the miracles you have to, you know, put out fire, but then also to rain down lightning to clear trees so now you have more spaces to go. But, of course, that cause you know, cost you MP and the way you refill the MP is by fighting those demons that come out. And then if your angel yeah. takes damage, you have to pick up the apples that you know heal the like there's some it's this it is a game that has something going on constantly and i love that about it in the way of like okay cool i want to clear those trees but i'm not there yet but i need to focus on this but i'll do that and i'll do that and then oh wait hold on i should build you know i have enough now to build another uh tower down there to defend from the cell and it's also and it's so arcadey it's so quick it's very yeah. much like one of my favorite video games is sid meyer's pirates which takes everything about a sandbox game and like boils it down to like a joystick and a button this one kind of does the same thing, and that's what I like about it. It's a great take on the sim genre. It It's fun. It also, the story is whatever, but I'm really interested to see what happens when you get to the end, Greg. Yeah. Because the end, the end kind of hits a little. Uh, so so <laughs> let me know what you think of it when you're done. But yeah, friends, play Act Racer Renaissance. Support, um, support a good game. Yes, it is ugly. Music <laughs> makes up for it. I don't think it's ugly. Soundtrack. Again, not knowing what it looks like before, I look at it, I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. It... it I can tell what Jared is talking about just because I think that eight and sixteen bit, you know, pixel games look more. I, they're more appealing to the eye to me than when a game tries to remake it by kind of what ends up looking like a flash game. Ultimately, it always sure. ends up looking like some web type game where you aren't getting full animations. It's more of a like a like when you use Puppet Tool in in Adobe Premiere or whatever it is. <laughs> Tim knows what I'm talking about. He like yeah. You make yeah. you make like the leg. You just make the leg move like that, and the thigh won't move. Like it's never a full kind of animation. It's always sort of this uh, marionette sort of thing looking. Yeah, and that's yeah. you know what I want is vanillaware to draw this thing, right? I want it to look like Odin Spear or Dragon's Crown, and I'm not going to get that because I don't have the money. So I'll take what I can get, and it's good. And it's fun. And is it worth thirty bucks? Yes, it is. It's a really great video game. I think. Is there a dodge and a parry? <laughs> no, you're Jared, pretty much just 
beat things with a sword. Oh, okay. It, it, it's funny you brought up uh, Sid Meier's Pirates because that was your best game of all time that we did for that IGN project. So, yeah, a little... You remember that. Aww. Of course I do. Of course, Jared. I'll never forget. Never Aww. forget. Uh, moving on. It wasn't your number one game, but I'm sure it would have been up there somewhere. At least one of them would have been. You're also playing the Castlevania Advance Collection. I haven't been able to touch this yet, Jared. Please have good news. Okay, so here we go. This is a package where you get four classic Castlevania games, all from the uh, all from kind of the mid era of Castlevania. Castlevania has certain eras, and uh, this one is one linear Castlevania, and then three of the Symphony of the Night types, all in one package. Three GBA games, and then one SNES game. And what you get in this package are one terrible Castlevania game, the SNES. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Not not Castlevania Four, the good SNES one, but the Dracula X, which is just awful. It's a terrible video game. Never play it. That sounds like Freddy versus Jason, or what's it called? The, 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 the space one, Jason X. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think that that is absolutely perfect. The Jason X is a really good comparison for this game. It's just it's a crappy version of a great game. Uh, there's the TurboGrafx 16 version. This is like a down port. But it's does all these horrible design decisions that make it just not fun. It's just boring and hard. And then you get two completely mediocre portable Symphony of the Night clones in Circle and Harmony. Uh, they're the first two GBA Castlevanias. They you are fucking monster, Jared Petty. They are whatever. Honestly, they're in my opinion, they both have very fundamental problems. Circle is a game that's built largely around verticality on a horizontal display. It's like playing Legend of Kage. It's kind of slow and plotty and boring. The enemies are bullet sponges. The castle layout's not great. Harmony has terrible castle layout. It's just dull. But then you get Aria Sorrow, the last GBA Castlevania. And that more than makes up for the entire collection. Aria Sorrow is a bonafide masterpiece video game it is a top 100 all-time video game wow in all the annals of video gameage aria of sorrow is a must play it is many argue the best castlevania even better than symphony or rondo uh and anybody that has that opinion i'm not going to argue with it is metroidvania perfection still down a castlevania do the symphony of night thing and then add mega man where you get all your enemies' powers, and that's Arya. It's Symphony of the Night with Mega Man mechanics, where anything you kill, you steal its powers. And it's awesome. And then it changes your look. Ah, oh, there's nothing better than that back nothing in the day. Is there? Oh, my gosh. I love Arya. I love Arya. your armor. Jared, um, I yeah, love you so much. I love that you have so <laughs> such thought about each single one. Because to me, honestly, the GBA games, I really kind of run them all together. Like, I, I think that they're all, I would never call any of them mediocre. You freaking monster. Uh, but I mean, I do remember Aria being a standout for me, but I, I stand out being just a little bit. Like, I, I Circle of the Moon was awesome. Circle of the Moon was awesome when it came out. That's the problem. We were like, mm. oh, look, a Metroidvania on a portable. Back when we were getting from the Game Boy Color, like the jump in tech from the Game Boy Color to the GBA was unreal. Yeah, You know, it was like jumping from the NES to the SNES, which is one of the biggest leaps in the history of gaming in terms of technology. So the fact that we're like, wow, you can explore the whole castle, that glossed over a ton of flaws, as did its baller soundtrack. Like, that game has an incredible soundtrack. Um, but when you go back and look at it now, there's not... It's a historical curio. Now, I want to be clear. I... And so glad all these games, even the bad ones, are being re-released because context matters. History matters. We should have access to bad games. We should have access to mediocre games. We should be able to play games we love that other people tell us aren't good. Uh, Mike Drucker loves these games. Oh, and he's a guy who's, whose opinion I really, really respect. He's wrong, but he's welcome to be wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Andy, so sorry, you, you were about to ask something? No, I, I mean, I was just going to mention that I, when we're talking about going back and sort of revisiting these older games in a looking at them in a new light, I'm made even more sad that Switch didn't reveal any sort of Game Boy Advance collection because with Fusion coming or with uh, with Metroid Dread coming out, like I would have loved to have have an easy access to Fusion right now. I don't want to have mm -hmm. to go through all these weird hoops to get the game. Why? Why is it so hard? <laughs> Jared, correct me if I'm wrong here. 
But Andy, this is one of the most weird Nintendo decision things of history that I can remember. Really? Metroid Fusion, the last time it was available, was on the 3DS, not eShop, only if you bought the original 3DS before the price drop, where they were like, oh, we fucked up. We know a lot of people bought this thing, and then we immediately dropped the price within like five months. And they're like, you're a Nintendo ambassador, so you're going to be able to download like these 10 GBA games uh, for the 3DS. And that was the only way to ever get those games. I think Fusion was one of them. <laughs> was Fusion one of the ambassador games? I, I think I it was. I realized that. <laughs> I, I, it's on Wii U. You can play it on Wii U. Okay, at part. Wii U, yeah. Uh, so at least there's that. A, so if you yeah, bust you out your Wii U, Wii U, Andy. <laughs> uh, that yeah, my I mean, ex-girlfriend took it <laughs> in the breakup. <laughs> you got that is the saddest <laughs> fucking breakup story of yeah, all time. She took the Wii. I was so pissed. I was like, please let me have it. I'll give you like 20 extra bucks. We split it. <laughs> what the fuck? Uh, so I uh, I keep my Wii U hooked up. Up till now, I kept my Wii U hooked up so I could play Aria. Uh, on it that was because no that was the last time it was available but yeah um you have metroid now you can finally throw here. it out <laughs> uh, yeah, I, i'm with andy like uh it, it, i'm absolutely with andy uh i really was hoping we get zero mission and fusion if fusion's good zero mission's a again another masterpiece like that's oh. an incredible video game talking going back to the circle of the moon versus aria all that Zero Mission has my heart. I love Fusion. I love the Fusion suit. But Zero Me Mission is just took the original and made it so much better. So, okay. yeah. Uh, and I'm looking here. Metroid Fusion was one of the GBA ambassador exclusive <laughs> Unbelievable. games. Unbelievable. Which is just so hilarious. Unbelievable. <laughs> yeah, and it, it, that, it makes me so sad because a lot of that gaming catalog is just something that I did not really get to experience. I, I had sort of stopped doing the handheld gaming around... Uh, after color like i had a game boy advance at one point and just never really used it a whole lot because um i don't i don't i honestly don't know i don't, I don't know why i think i think um there was a part of me that was really turned off by the tony hawk game boy color <laughs> game that i was like fuck i like these handheld games just don't got it they're gonna keep on giving us fake versions of what they should be and i'm sick of this shit i'm done i don't want any like because I expected like it to look like the PS1 ver or you know what I mean like <laughs> yeah, I was very very yeah. saddened by that. So by that point, I was kind of bummed out by a lot of a lot of games around that era. Um, so yeah, it just sucks. There's so many great games in that catalog that I'll just I won't be able to experience until they hopefully bring this collection to Switch. Yeah. Listen, man, people at THQ needed jobs back in the day. They needed to make those Game Boy Advance versions of of all the other games you played. I, but it was, I mean, of all I the other games you, you loved. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You went back in time. There, that was a weird era. You'd like there'd be like Tomb Raider, and then there'd be like Tomb Raider GBA, and it would be an yeah. entirely original game. And it, it and was a little, side scroll. Like this isn't what I wanted it to be. <laughs> but sometimes they were great and that, awesome. Yeah. They were garbage. <laughs> and now with that, I do. I have to say, Game Boy Color, Tony Hawk games utter trash game boy advanced tony hawk games are rad as shit even though they are radically different than uh, the playstation one versions but no like those games are awesome so you should check it out Definitely. Tim, i love you i yeah oh, i love you so much i, I know so we got to move on we do need to move on to a game called new world i saw you guys streaming this today a little bit this is the new amazon game correct correct tell me all about it Andy cortez no, okay. you go. I mean, I'll, I'll, you're, I'll take. I'll take back up to you. I'll be your second banana. So first off, if this, if this game stays successful, I am owed a pizza. I am owed a pizza from somebody because I swear, like I've been the one saying, like guys, you better watch out for this new world game. A lot of MMO Correct. fans out there that really want a good MMO and they see a lot of promise in this. And so far, uh, it people who are really hot on it were the ones that were around for the beta. And I think it is. I think it will be a game that does stick around for a while. I don't think it's going to be this flash in the pan like a lot of other online titles. I'm not going to say it's going to be close to Final Fantasy 14 or to WoW or whatever. But um, yeah, we tried it out today and it's it's an MMO, everybody. It is an <laughs> MMO in the way that you expect it to be. You are early on breaking up rocks to get the thing to then craft that new item. And there's a lot of crafting early on to sort of get you onboarded. But I will say the combat in this game does not feel like any MMO. The combat is, I think, 
I think really fun. It's very reactive. It doesn't ever feel like this sort of passive experience of you just hitting four to shoot the arrow, hitting four to shoot the arrow, hitting five to shoot that spell. It is all, it feels like you're just playing a third person uh, game inside of an MMO. And I, I know this isn't the first to do it, but it feels really sharp and crisp when you are in that action. And there is a dodge roll, really important for me. <laughs> um, you can uh, you can block in certain moments. You can dodge away back from uh, from certain enemies' attacks. The shooting the arrows, you are legitimately just aiming the arrow and trying to get the headshot for the critical damage. You're not just kind of getting crit by chance. I feel like it yeah, really it's not is. A roll or anything like that. Yeah, I feel like it is really rewarding your your accuracy and your your skill. And um, I don't know. I had a lot of fun with the combat. Um, it is daunting, though. Good lord, I forgot the feeling of getting into an MMO at first and sort of kind of getting overwhelmed with it and seeing the right panel, like fucking half of my screen on the right side is just quest, 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 quest. Like, <laughs> oh my gosh, I got to figure out the UI here. Um, but I had fun with it. Will I stick around? I don't know. I haven't really been into an MMO in a long time. It's just I try to avoid them because I know that they will suck me in. Uh, Greg, how are you feeling about it? I, I was impressed. I liked it a lot. Um, everything you said resonates with it. And it kind of, for me personally, uh, is what works against it, too, where the combat's awesome. I love the combat. I hate mouse and keyboard. Like, so it's just that thing of the as I play it and, you know, not struggle and feel clumsy with it as you try i uh, you know a co controller console person try to get their vibe for it thank you tim be <laughs> holding up your uh playstation move uh, that means navigation. nothing to that means nothing to jared please explain to him jared i i now use my playstation 3 navigation controller in place of a keyboard to play with the mouse so if you need some great tips on the future, look at Jared's fucking up, face as you reveal <laughs> yourself. Well, how dumbfounded he is because he I, knows and he's probably on the right side here. Or it's a fucking abomination, Tim. It's an abomination. What you? I mean, do. I'm telling you, it's God. I'm telling I you, step all, out. Greg Miller just needs to try it once, and he's going to be right there with me. And he's a lot louder than I am, so it, it's going <laughs> to change the fucking world. <laughs> I step out for cigarettes for a couple of years, <laughs> and y'all just go to shit. <laughs> <laughs> we're so sorry yeah so so what you would have loved before that jared is when we first started playing warzone and we got nick got really into playing like pc games and warzone and, and first person shooters and nick was playing call of duty warzone on his ps5 with a keyboard and mouse with the mouse inverted <laughs> He had a mouse and keyboard plugged into his PS5 and the mouse is inverted because of his old flight sim games from back in the day. And then Tim plays on PC with a PC, though, like he should. But there's the controller. Well, this is before he got the move uh, implemented. But he's using his left hand for the analog stick and the other buttons and he's using right for aim. It's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> I, I honestly think I just had a bowel movement. I, yeah. I just don't know what is happening. The, no, here's the thing, scary. though. Tim was fragging out. Tim was fragging out with us I on Friday fragging. on Saturday. So, I, you I know, don't, I mean, don't yuck his yum. Don't yuck his, yeah, his yum, Jared. Remember the Dreamcast? Like, people would, like, get so good at Soul Calibur that they play with a fishing controller. This is, I think this is just like the modern day equivalent. <laughs> now, I, I know that we've talked about this a lot. So, Greg, I do want to get back to you talking oh, yeah, about, the, worry, the, mommy, the, worry, the new world. Real talk, though, it's like I think it'll solve any problem you have with mouse and keyboard. The keyboard, well, it's the same thing. Way too many buttons, and it's just mm -hmm. like having the the directional like stuff to replace an analog stick that you're used to. In addition to keeping your mind on all the other buttons, that's where it gets complicated. You know how to use a mouse. That's the easy part. Yeah, like you just aim better. <laughs> like there's no downside there. And having the analog control in your left hand, you're not losing any functionality of the keyboard. You're just having a better way to control your character. And the important thing, Tim, for you is that this game is not like a lot of other MMOs. Uh, I think one of the things when Kevin and Tim, or when Kevin and Greg were getting into uh, Star Wars, Star Wars the Old Republic, Republic, when they were getting Republic. back into it, Kevin had bought that Tartarus device or whatever the hell it's called, where it's like a full glove that sits on the table and it has the thumbstick analog for, but everything else you are surrounded. Got it. There it is. There it is. Yeah. yeah. Um, this ain't it. This ain't it. I'm telling everyone right now. Really? This does not solve the problem. This isn't an analog. It's just a dumb, like clicky. A little nub or some shit. It, got it. it this does not solve the problem for anybody this is a okay. cool thing to have and has a lot of cool functions it is not the beautiful masterpiece 
that I. So here's before. the thing, Kevin. That thing does make sense for Kevin though that you just showed us with all those buttons. But this thing, Greg, you're switching between one weapon or the other, and that's it. There are no. You aren't really fucking with like, you know, three is that spell, four is that spell, five is that yeah. spell, six yeah. is that spell. Like none of that shit, which is very akin to what my experience was in World of Warcraft, where I had to get really good at like. Oh, my my arrow volley is on three and then my super arrows on four, whatever the fuck. Like I forgot all the World of Warcraft moves. I of had course. the tiger. I had the beast. I forget. I was a night elf hunter. Uh, no big deal. Uh, yeah, it, that's what is heartbreaking for it is like the this game from what we've played so far, what a couple hours of it today, right? Totally would work with a controller. And I know they've said originally they said they weren't. Then since then, they said they've looked they're looking into it. And so that's just the thing for me is just a personal preference of playing it and going through it like. I think the combat's great. I wish I could play the combat with a controller. That's not what's pushing me away solely or anything like that. It's more the thing as as I find with any MMO I play or any big game like this, as we start going into it, it's when I was playing solo and listening to the boys on the stream, I was engaging with the story, understanding a bit of what was going on, having understanding great. Then when I jumped into your guys' world, it quickly became cool. I'm with my friends and I'm fucking around with Kevin and Nick and Andy. And then it was like, accept, accept, accept. I'm no longer listening to what the, per- the quest giver is saying. I'm just taking all the shit. I'm just running through all the shit. And so then I'm just leveling and just chasing leveling up i'm going off and killing this many boars to get whatever to go do the thing and then that's when it starts getting in my head of like cool this is now just become any kind of video game like this is the hook of any game and so why would i play this when i can go play assassin's creed odyssey now granted that's not a you know massively online one but it's the same thing of i can chase a level i can go be cassandra i can go be engaged in that world already you know here we are on the cusp of far cry 6 like i'm way more excited to lose myself to that world than i would be to this world and it's the same thing we saw with with star wars the old republic me me and kevin we're and mike when we were playing of i love that we, star wars let's be we're being sit that's great but when we were playing together I was skipping three hours of the story at a time and then coming back and be like, all right, who are you? Ah, we're bad. Let's go kill. It's like, all right, well, why am I doing that? I think the, I think the hook of what would get other people in that may not necessarily be into MMOs is again, not only the combat that we just mentioned, but it has this thing where you join three different factions. And at any point in time, different factions can rule certain parts of the big overworld map that you're on. And you can open up the map and see like, oh, that's their territory. I shouldn't go fuck around over there. But I don't know how that messes with, are we on a PVE server? Are we on a PVP server? I'm not really sure how that ties in, whether if you go over there, you're open game, you could just get killed or whatever. Um, But I think that is one of the, the sort of hooks that's bringing in people who are more, who play World of Warcraft and play competitively. Like, I never did PvP in World of Warcraft. I never cared about it. I don't see why anybody would have thought that that was super fun because it is that sort of passive. Well, I can't dodge that attack you just shot at me. I wish I could, but it's just going to hit me no matter what. Sure. Um, now, this one, the PvP seems a lot more involved. Uh, it seems a lot more fun. It's something that I would be into. But will I even play long enough to get there is the big question because... Again, it's an MMO, it's daunting, and I have about seven other games that I want to be playing right now as well. And that's always the thing when I think about a game like this that I want to invest in, especially for like what we're talking about with uh, you know, combat or dodge roll or whatever, how close they are to it of just like, well, why wouldn't I go back to DC Universe online? Like, right, I already have 900 hours into that MMO, and I, I could have the same experience of coming back and being like, I don't know what the hell's going on, you know what I mean? Or why not go play Kingdoms of Amalur Reckoning, which I, uh, you know, a game I love, or Re Reckoning now, I guess, go back in there where I thought the combat was awesome and stuff like that. Like, this is a fun one, but it was already as like, you know, I when I came back, you had already left the stream. I came back and hung out with Mike and Kevin for a little bit before Bruce got, got there, and I was playing Fire Pro World while they were playing the thing, right? And it was just like, you know, I'm enjoying playing my stupid other game while I listen to them play their stupid game. I it's good, it, though. It's... Like In terms of the quality of the game, it is a good MMO. Like, I can see why, even now, I think tonight I might sign back on and play so- alone. It might be a game that if I give it three hours of just soul, I'm playing it, and I'm not trying to interact with my friends, and then I have my boots on the ground of what the world is, I'm kind of into the, the story, then I could go out and have a fun time with it. But yeah, I mean, I I had turned it off because I was like, all right, I got to go heat up my leftover pizza and then immediately fired it back up. Unfortunately, there was 300 people <laughs> waiting in front of me in the queue. So <laughs> I, just, I had to sit there for about 20 minutes. But I felt the, the want to go back and finish and kill that one boss, that mini boss in that mm-hmm. certain area that would get me a certain amount of XP. Uh, 
because again, with any of these things, you see that carrot at the end of the stick and you you see that color flash and it goes, oh, great. I leveled up. That feels awesome. Oh, I can get this move now and expand my move set a bit more. Um, and this arrow does this thing now, which is awesome. And like with any video game, I I sort of get that immediate satisfaction <laughs> from seeing the number go higher. I'm a of simple course. guy. I'm a simple guy. Before we move on, let me tell you about our sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Purple. Sometimes it can feel like the world is against you getting a good night's sleep. There's already tons of things to be anxious about, and then there's the heat. Thanks, climate change. But when you have a Purple mattress, you can sleep cool and comfortable uh, no matter what the world throws at you. That's because only Purple mattress has the grid. It's a unique ventilated design that lets air flow through it, which helps you sleep cool even when it's... Well, what it's been lately. The grid is supportive to your back and legs while somehow also being cushiony for your shoulders, neck, and hips. Don't take my word for it. Take Joey Noel's word for it. She sleeps on a, a, a purple mattress. She loves it. She says it keeps it cold. And then on top of that, Tim Geddes uses the purple pillow and he loves it, never shuts up about it. Purple is comfort reinvented. Right now, you'll get 10% off any order of $200 or more. Go to purple.com slash MLM and use the promo code MLM. That's purple.com slash MLM Promo code MLM for 10% off any order of $200 or more. Purple.com slash MLM. Promo code MLM. Terms apply. Our next sponsor is FitBod, ladies and gentlemen. Sometimes it can be tough to keep working out. And if your routine gets too boring, it's that much easier to just skip a week. And then another week. And then another and another and another. You see where this is going, of course. Because you're making progress uh, means overcoming new challenges and keeping yourself engaged. That's why FitBod created a fitness program that adapts to you with new exercises to adjust to how you're progressing. This is what one Gia Tap Harris, Tim's fiance, has been doing. Uh, Gia talks all the time about how much she loves FitBod how much it keeps her motivated because again it's switching the programs she's not getting bored she's always being challenged fitbod's algorithm uses data and analytics to help you build on your last workout to maximize your results plus fitbod workouts are balanced to avoid overworking muscles with varied exercises to keep you sharp it's only 9.99 a month or 59.99 a year Pick up the pace on your fitness journey with FitBod today, and your future self will thank you. Get 25% off your membership at fitbod.me slash kfgames. That's 25% off at fitbod.me slash kfgames. And now here we are, guys. It's time for the topic of the show. I've been teasing this one for a while, but we kept having other things to talk about. We're finally doing it. The topic is, we predicted 2021 in 2019. How wrong were we? God. <laughs> this comes from Reddit user n 7 Mikel over on the Kind of Funny subreddit, where they say, in Gamescast episode 205 from January 17th, 2019, Tim, Greg, Jared, and Fran made predictions for what gaming would look like in 2021. A lot has obviously happened since then that no one could have predicted, but it still makes for a really fun episode that I would recommend you go back to. That was a to. pandemic. <laughs> can, 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 I guess, so much happened. can I guess that Fran was the most wrong? I will say I've only glanced at the thing, and I don't want to, you know, spoil too much for you, but I will say overall... We fucking killed it, boys. We oh, fucking right. killed wow. it. There's some things that are like, okay, we got a little wrong or whatever. But for the most part, eh, I saw the think cast thing might work out. We are oracles, my friend. I took a, a <laughs> peek at this Reddit. Right we we are I, we are bona fide prophets. Mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let's start it off. Uh, he wrote some of the highlights here. Tim says the Switch will have two revisions, selling more than 3DS, but not as much as the Wii U. And I fucking nailed it, everybody. The Switch Lite, it exists. The Switch OLED Edition, it exists. And guess where this thing lands now on the list of best-selling consoles? Currently, the Nintendo Switch is above the 3DS, but under the Wii. Oh, the Will Wii. It? Okay, you said the you Wii, said Wii, Wii U. Oh, yeah. my bad. And I was Sorry. like, <laughs> if it's not beating the Wii U, the Nintendo's my bad, my in bad. trouble. <laughs> Yeah, I saw all you were like giving me a face. I was like, what am I getting wrong here? Thank you for that call there. Uh, so the 3DS is currently at just shy of 76 million. The Switch is at 89 million. And the Wii is at 101.63 million. Holy cow. So I think it's going to outpace it at some point. But as of 2021, I'm looking good here. I, I would dare say, Tim, mm -hmm. that it would be good news. I think if it weren't for supply chain difficulties right now, there's some chance that you would be wrong. But only because it outsold even we. 
Totally. I, I honestly think you were even more right than you knew. Tim That's knew a good it. point. Tim That's a good it. point. I was Tim also right, was Jared. I was also right about there being a Nintendo Switch Lite. Me and you, the most one of the most epic battles we ever had was, will there ever be a Switch that is not portable? And you're like, they won't do it. I'm like, they made a 3DS that was 2D. They will. And then they did, Jared. They did. But I'm not always right. I am, in fact, often wrong. Uh, where you said there will be no Switch Pro by 2021. And I disagreed. <laughs> and there is egg all over my face, everybody. Okay. There is the OLED bottle, but it is not a pro. I got to concede it. You're right, Jared. You're right. I just thought it was too soon. I thought it was too soon. I think, they're, I think they'll do something like that, but it's too soon. Um, even next year, maybe, but not now. Next up, another well, question. Oh, Did anybody Bray order Bray the new Switch Pro? Do we, are, who else is getting a Switch Pro? I got a Swole uh, pre-order. Well, well, the OLED. OLED. Yes. I'm very excited yeah. for it. Yeah. And yeah. I, 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 I trashed it and talked shit on it and then immediately pre-ordered one because I'm weak. I, they did everything I wanted, so I can't be complaining. Uh, and, and just, I, didn't, I never use it portable, so why All I did I get portable. it? Can't wait. Why did I get it? Don't I don't yeah, know. That was can't answer. Purchase, Andy. I, I, I don't, don't know. know. I don't know. You know why? For the plane flight, uh, for the flight that I, nah, who am I kidding? I never, dude. The You're amount of money with. that I've spent on games when I'm going on a trip somewhere, I'll 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 throw down like eighty bucks and buy like two indies and then an actual like Nintendo title, <laughs> and I never play them on the plane. I just sleep every time. When never. will I learn? When will I learn? Never. I don't know. I, I don't know. I almost bought an OLED, and then in the most Jared of moves, I bought a light for the D pad. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very Jared move, and I gotta respect it. I yeah. gotta respect it. Um, Jared has another one here. Half Life Three announced before the end of twenty twenty one. Now, I want to give you partial credit yeah. for this. Because while we did not get Half-Life 3, and Half-Life 3, we know what that means. It is Half-Life 3. It is not Half-Life Alex. We did get a new Half-Life, and it was great. So I, I'll give you the points, Jared. I feel like half a point. Thank you very much. I think you're being generous. I, 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 I Too generous. Don't give it to him. Half a point. Yeah, I'll take give him half nothing. a point for this. No. Give him nothing. I, I'm giving you three quarters. I'm giving you three quarters. Like the, three quarters the sounds good. That, I think the fact that anything Half Life happened at all from an official play from from Valve is sh absolutely shocking, and I think you get point seventy five points for me. Okay, so it's, so right now uh, the score is Tim one, you're at point seven five. Mm -hmm. right? That's where we're at right now. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And to be clear, we can keep points for fun if you want. I, I don't think all of the predictions are here, so I don't think the points are going to necessarily oh, oh, okay. well, uh, gonna count really. for much. But it's just it's just more for fun. Well, we shouldn't keep points. Uh, <laughs> like Fran, Fran Mirabella, who comes in saying subscriptions and battle passes will be the standard. I would say they are the standard. I think that there are diff different people like Nintendo and Sony that aren't doing it, but like. There are a ton of subscriptions. Battle passes are definitely the standard when it comes to any type of living game. I'll give it he, to him. That, he fucking crushed it. Yeah. Like the uh, I'll never forget opening another game after Fortnite came out and be like, oh, this has about oh, they're calling it battle pass. Oh, I thought that was just a Fortnite thing. Oh, that's just and a then, thing now. <laughs> and then it just became a standard. It's so bizarre. But even opening up uh fucking knockout city, be like, oh, there's a battle pass here. There's a battle pass in every goddamn game. Good job, friend. Good job, friend. Do we have to tell him to his face, though, right? Yeah, no, never. God, no, 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 no. I really um, do love that wonderful example of the industry just going for something that worked. Like, you know, a few years ago, it was MTX, MTX, MTX. Everything, everything's got to be add-on content and, and DLC and, and, and microtransaction. Micro and the fact that people just finally understood that the market would purchase xp and cosmetics that didn't affect gameplay over it to win like that that shift it was so brilliant i really think fran just just again he was a prophet on this one well mm -hmm. done fran yeah so we're not going to give people shit or, or uh, props when they get something right but we're also not going to give people shit when they get something wrong like this tim guy who says uh xbox playstation and nintendo will only have one subscription service each that gives you it all game pass and xbox live will be one service same with mm -hmm. playstation plus and playstation now I was off. I feel like there was some moments of that. I feel like with Xbox, we're still gearing towards that just being a full reality with X Cloud and X uh, Game Pass and Xbox Live all together. But we're not quite there. And the other guys definitely are not quite there, especially with Nintendo just announcing there's a new plan <laughs> with the Nintendo Switch Online Plus. <laughs> it, it, see, on paper, it sounds like it would make sense that you could say, oh, yeah, in the future, they're going to eliminate that. They're going to simplify. It's going to become one thing. 
They said no, though. Not yet. Now, <laughs> I, I think yet. like Icarus, you flew too close to the sun, including Nintendo. If it hadn't been for the pandemic, Sony and Microsoft might be there. Yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. Nintendo, no, Nintendo was not going to get Are you kidding? Yeah. No. Totally, totally. Uh, and then, Greg, Gearbox I, is out of business or no oh. longer independent. Boom. Thank you, Embracer Group, coming through and doing what you do, <laughs> buying fucking companies. Uh, and then a note there, Tim thinks Microsoft will buy Gearbox and put someone else in charge. I was wrong. Fuck I you, was Tim. wrong. That's a good uh, prediction, Greg. though, Tim. I want to give you points just for like, Fuck. for Thank being you. like on point I made the right prediction there. was right. Yeah, but you know, yeah, anybody could have done that. You know, Anyone could have got it right. <laughs> yeah. can, can I make a confession? Go for yeah. it, Jared. Until this point, somewhere in my head canon with all the acquisitions, I convinced myself that Microsoft had bought Gearbox. So <laughs> you convinced yourself that I was right, which I do appreciate. I do appreciate. And I'm going to be honest. I have a confession to make that I thought was about to be your confession, Jared. I didn't know that. So reading this right now, I was like, I don't know if Greg gets the point or not. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Andy, real talk. Did you know Embracer Group got Gearbox? I knew somebody got Gearbox, and I knew it was one of these groups that we made fun of during E3. Uh, yeah, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew it was one of those big, <laughs> gigantic corporations fun. that will never have a face because they are part of three other corporations. Yeah, yeah. Uh, my next one. Oh, this is gonna piss people off, but it is what it is. PlayStation Five will have a demonstrably, demonstrably better lineup than Xbox Scarlet. Thinks PlayStation will deliver three solid exclusives in the year while xbox will probably have two at most of varying quality i say i get the point i think I you get, get a half point, point. well why are you gonna half point me because the are you talking about the first uh full year of both uh consoles in that uh prediction uh i mean that the problem that gets confusing about this is there was like the launch time and then 2021 so it's yeah. counting 2021 okay because like i do think that like Hasn't Xbox had more than two, uh, like, games coming out of their studios that have been of good quality? Psychonauts. Was it of Not good exclusive. quality or great Not exclusive. quality? Not exclusive. Mm. That's Any my thing. Wait, wait, exclusive. Wait, 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 you used the word exclusive specifically? Mm-hmm. Mm. Okay, okay, okay. I, yeah, get the whole point. I can see. Yeah, that. I think you get the full point. I mean, we're talking Demon Souls. We're talking Ratchet and Clank. We're talking Returnal. Returnal. I mean, here's the thing: we're not debating the PlayStation side. <laughs> we are <laughs> debating the, the Xbox side. Um, I mean, did they have mm, more than two exclusive, so, exclusive, exclusive, like solid exclusives? I mean, does Good. Death Door count as a as an exclusive since it's a Played console on PC? Oh, you're yeah, saying console I mean, exclusive? Because it's a console exclusive, does that count? Well, it's not an Xbox Game Studio thing or like an Xbox partnership. I, either way, I mean, I think that I get the point. Wait, are we uh, talking launch or 2021? Because if it's 2021, do are you? Is it Halo and Forza? And then if before that, st- I know that's not out yet, but if it w- it would be if we're talking about it, and then Flight Sim, and uh, the. Yeah, is that, is that we're talking? We broke Craig. We broke Craig. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Bro, I, don't know. I, you know, I think I deserve a point. Out. But let me know in the comments below if you think I deserve less than a point for that. I think you get the I point. Would, I, I think, think you get the point. point. Thank you. I think you Thank get you. the point. Greg says Xbox will be the toast of the town by 2021, and people will talk about it like they talked about the Switch at launch. "Quote: Oh my God, the Switch is great." <laughs> now, <laughs> Xbox Game Pass. Thing. Do we now That's walk around thing. all the time saying the best value in gaming? That is true. And I, I would argue, I don't think you get a full point for that. I do think you deserve some partial credit, though, because people do talk about Game Pass this way. Mm-hmm. And, and I, not I only think that, go for it. And not, not only Game Pass, but the ease of everything they're doing, like how consumer friendly everything yeah. has been, how great whenever their anybody mentions having to upgrade their PS4 game to a PS5 and they have to download the cloud save and do all this bullshit and Smart delivery is a thing, and that's just so consumer friendly. So I think, you know what, Greg? I think they are the toast of the town. You know, I, I, people love Bill Spencer. I'm going to Sorry, go. disagree a little bit here. I, I absolutely think Game Pass is the best value in gaming. I think their back catalog commitment is fantastic. I think Andy's totally right about their customer service. They have absolutely everything going for them except new video games. Um, and I, I do think that that keeps toast you from being toast of the town. I mean, I. 
I love my, what Microsoft's doing. I, I think they're brilliant. The acquisitions, I think they've got a bright future, but I still don't think they quite landed yet. I still have not seen my reason to go get an Xbox. I mean, the bigger thing for me that like would make Greg not get the full point here is the comparison to the Switch's launch. Like the things that we made us say, oh my God, the Switch is great, was like, hey, the promise of the portability console thing worked and we got debatably the best Zelda, debatably the best Mario of all time within that year. Whereas with Xbox, it's like, yeah, we got Game Pass, but we already had Game Pass before too. And it was dope then. People like it now. 0.6, 0.6 for Greg. I'd, I'd even go 0.7, Andy. Wow. Yeah. Are you happy with that, Greg? Just to the town. I mean, I'll take what I can get. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> but this is, you're not treating me like I'm the toast of the town. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, let's see. There's a fun conversation that goes a lot of different places. Greg thinks Xbox will support cross-gen games that look great on Scarlet, while PlayStation will focus on PlayStation 5. Tim thinks PlayStation will have to support cross-gen as well. Gotcha, You're Greg. so close, Greg. Wait, yeah. but hold on. So say, say my part again. Uh, Greg thinks Xbox will support cross-gen games that look great on Scarlet, while PlayStation is... Just they're moving forward to PlayStation Five. And that's not what you read initially. I, don't know, I see how you're trying PlayStation to you focus on PlayStation Five. They, they are focusing great. on PS Five. Nah, I didn't. I didn't nah. say they would. Nah. That's what you're saying. The that's... toast of the town. Like, what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, because like the thing is, the context is me then coming and saying, I, I think I'm, PlayStation I'm aware that I'm lost. Across. I'm aware okay, that I lost. Gotcha, gotcha. <laughs> I'm but, just I'm arguing. <laughs> uh, they also try to figure out what an Xbox lineup looks like, which is fun to re-listen to po- post Bethesda acquisition. Uh, they also talk about streaming. Uh, which Jared has a suspicious interest in. <laughs> That's very funny. Uh, Fran comes in saying Apple will have a controller solution by 2021 for iPhones and or for phones and Apple TV. Now here's the deal. I'm gonna give Fran partial credit oh, toast for this to the town one. because well, while while they do not have an actual Apple unique controller, the Apple Store sells. Dual sense controllers for this specific purpose and promotes it as the controller of Apple games on Apple TV and phones. So it's like you're just Apple out is here. Silly. I understand Fran gave you your start in this industry. You don't have to carry water for him anymore. All right. Uh-huh. Giving him uh-huh. all these things. Think about what he did to Jared and then look me in the eye and tell me, all right, this guy deserves these points. I think uh-huh. he gets the point for that one because they knew that they weren't going to come up with their own. Barrett, I understand Fran gave you your start in the <laughs> industry. He really didn't. <laughs> I, I also love that Greg's trying to win and make sure Fred loses. <laughs> I hate him. It's so good. But yeah, I, I would give him, I'd give him a, a like 0.25 for this because he meant Apple's going to have a controller. Not that they're See, just going to. Yeah, that's my thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, yeah. I, and I would have even gone about, I mean, you know, I, the solution, of course, is the backbone, which they somehow fucked up in 2021. <laughs> But I mean, that would it make it if they literally like just like put an Apple logo on a dual sense friend would be right. I mean, the, the, it, my understanding is it's pretty much 100 percent compatible across the library, right? That it's and, officially well, sure. well, so is the Xbox controller, right? Like, I mean, right. Yeah. Any yeah, controller yeah. You do the, the key for me, though, I, I would give him some points is that Apple actually uses the dual sense in Apple marketing right. as a controller to, alongside its game stuff. So it's like. There yeah. is a partnership there for the, the yeah. dual sense. A controller see, with no back paddles, embarrassing. Embarrassing. Yeah, you're gonna see like lifestyle photography of somebody playing Apple TV with with the dual sense. And I, I think that counts. I think I hate to give Fran credit for anything because he's so terrible, but mm-hmm. I do think mm-hmm. this is what, think about right. what he did to you. I, I that's true. <laughs> you know what you did. <laughs> you know what you did. <laughs> the internet will <laughs> soon enough, Fran. Don't worry. Moving on. And God, I'm happy I was right about this one. Final Fantasy VII Remake will be released and received better than a core Final Fantasy game since 12. Holy shit, you crushed That's it. That's a huge oh. one. That's a huge one. So happy about that. That game is a year. Kind that of is the boldest prediction of all, Tim. Mm-hmm. And you deserve three points for that. Thank you. Thank toast you, Toast to Andy. the town. Toast to the town. <laughs> toast oh, to the town. He's not Tim toast to the <laughs> The toast to the town, Greg. <laughs> Jared, Jared comes in. And this is a fun one. This is a very fun one. And this shows how long ago we made these predictions. Death Stranding oh, will come out and have a Metacritic somewhere in the 80s. The other guys are shocked, thinking it will be either in the 90s or below the 80s. 
And Tim thinks the gameplay will be better than Metal Gear Solid Five. Yeah, yeah, you deserve that. You I deserve, deserve that, that one, Tim. You deserve that. <laughs> I'm feeling that good so about this fun. one. Yeah, I'm feeling good Currently about this sit, one. What do you guys? What do you guys guess? I'm going to guess. Go I'm going to guess 88. Really? For the Metacritic? I would have guessed. Um, uh, I guess like 83, 83 or something. Yeah. 82. There you go. There you go. 82 on the Metacritic. So getting close to that under 80, but hey, Jared gets a full ass point for that. So yeah, Jared. I'm feeling good about it. Feeling good here. Thank you, friends. Thank you. Bran says Nintendo will have released a core phone game like a Mario or Zelda. No. Because this, I think, unless Mario Kart Tour came out after these predictions, then I would give him the point. I don't think Mario Kart Tour counts. That's that's still half a game. It's not a core but, Nintendo title. It's yeah, a core I, franchise, and it is one that people do but, play a but lot. But even before that episode, because I remember when this game came out to mobile when I was when I was at IGN, was the Mario side scroller, and that's a core franchise technically. So that wouldn't have been a prediction. I think Fran was saying like we're gonna get a Mario Odyssey two on the Apple Store or some shit like that. And that was my interpretation as well. Because, uh, yeah, you're right about uh, Barrett talking about Mario. Uh, you, that yeah, was Mario Run. That was, it was like 2017. Yeah, I mean, yeah. So Mario Kart Tour was 2019. So the Mario Kart Tour was after he made the prediction. And I would argue that it is a core title. We don't like it, but it is. It's a Mario Kart game. And, like, there's new Mario Kart maps in it, new levels. There's a lot of content. Again, I don't like it. But it's not like Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. Like, it is a Mario Kart game. But either way, I don't think you should get the full point because I it is not like a core title that everyone has to go out and play. But yeah, uh, I don't. I, I to me, like if you would have, I would have guessed it was on the exact same level as an Animal Crossing Pocket Camp. I didn't. I didn't think that there would be much of a of a of a difference between the two quality of those games. So like I. I just expected it was this thing that came out and nobody's going to talk about it again, just like Super Mario Run did. Mm hmm. I agree yeah, with Andy. I just, I yeah, I wasn't thinking it was going to be Odyssey 3 or whatever. The difference is higher. that the team that made Mario Kart 8 is, to this day, still making new courses for that game. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, God, mm -hmm. that sucks. And not 8? What the fuck yeah, is happening I know. in this company, Tim? Get on the phone with baby. Mr. Nintendo, please. I need some WNDs. Ah. I mean, it's not like people have stopped buying eight, though. Like Mario Kart eight will sell to 2045 at this rate. Like, and and it, you know what? You know what would make even more money, Jared? Putting out more DLC to sell to all of those fucking kids yeah, who are still so buying close. Mario Kart eight. But also so make a Mario Kart nine. Thing. I know. Thank I, you, Barry. Tim, Thank I know. You. I know. I yeah, know. you've come around, and I appreciate it. I appreciate it, young boy. All right, here yeah, we yeah. go. Greg, yeah. Greg's here. Disney will have ended the Star Wars agreement with EA. And an exclusive Xbox Star Wars game will have been announced. Oh, so close, Greg. So close. So close. You could have stopped <laughs> early. <laughs> Can you imagine if, uh, if it would have gone the other way there with Knights of the Old Republic or whatever? You know what I mean? Yeah. If it would have been right there? I mean, that's what it felt like. I am shocked. Even now, Did they I not can't get, believe it. Didn't they? I they, uh, no, Nintendo got that weird one, Nintendo right? Got they, the only, X the the only Xbox exclusive they've gotten from Disney is the Indiana Jones thing. No exclusive Marvel, no exclusive Star Wars. All they got is indie. Uh, Tim says, VR will not play a major role in the next console generation. It'll still exist, but it'll mean less than it does at the mo at that moment in time in 2019. Nailed it. Spot on. I, yeah, I mean, I think so far, it's interesting. I think that I'd argue against myself because of Alex, but mm -hmm. that's not on consoles. And also, yeah. Alex was like a, a a moment in time last year, right? Where it's like so much time has passed since then. Yeah. So we'll see. And Alex then is the most inaccessible this. video game of all time. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Greg has one here. PlayStation VR two will have been announced. So congratulations. Okay. Okay. I didn't fuck it up with some second half thing. All right. Well, <laughs> I still will give you this because I think it's going to be. But you said and be wireless. Okay, thank you. Thank you uh, for still giving it to you're, me. You're up on those Quest vibes. I thought you were going to say PSVR 2 will have been announced and 
completely free. Well, it goes back. <laughs> yeah, to, I think it goes back to you know Tim's earlier thing we were talking about, right? Of like, just that makes sense. It makes yeah. sense that the second one will be wireless. <laughs> that's what everybody wants. That's what everybody needs. But no, okay. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like it's it's. I, I think it will be. They have announced it in one of the most bizarre ways ever, but they did. <laughs> they did. Um, Jared says yeah. in 2021 there will be periods where Fortnite is the most streamed game. I do not have this information. I am going to guess <laughs> or during the event, right? Like yes. during the, they just had that other big event. That must have, I mean, you would have thought. Oh, they yeah, the that. Ariana Grande event. Absolutely. OK, I was thinking of the more recent one with the cube. But yeah, like there's so many di- big season ending events, right? That they must have had some. We're saying that it was the number one game on Twitch for a day even, or whatever. E- a moment. E- even in September 2021, Fortnite is at number eight of the most watched games on Twitch. So right now. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Patty, two thumbs up. You did that's, it. That's two thumbs up like- right there. I feel like that was a safe one. Like that was that one was was kind of easy. I think points like, on the board. Cute. Did I get uh, partial credit for the one I fucked up with the Xbox thing? The Star Wars Xbox thing. I mean, just want to make sure is that on the record? Does that happen? Well, what do you want partial credit for? Didn't I get? Oh, I got the right the first part right. Right, they're not, the exclusivity with EA is done. Oh, Disney have ended the Star Wars agreement with EA. I mean, I, I'll give you the points. Did they end the agreement though, or aren't they just? also working with other people well that would be the well, end it, of the exclusivity it, yeah, agreement right yeah exactly. <laughs> if the games aren't exclusive anymore yeah yeah, yeah. okay yeah I'll during you- the ariana grande event the Fortnite event had a viewership of 1.7 million viewers that's a lot of people watching ariana grande. people love ariana grande and then uh let's the say in her one. name too it's fun it is ariana grande. it's actually grandy did you know that no, it isn't. Mm-hmm. It is. It's Italian. A- Ariana Grande. <laughs> <laughs> That's not as so much fun to say. Why do you no. say it like ID? <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like, like something Jason Mendoza would say. That can't actually be true, can it? <laughs> Jason, it is true. A good call. It is true. Uh, Fran has the final one here saying Bungie will still be independent and Destiny will be more of a service game and less of a $60 game. Well, yeah. I mean definitely half credit but i don't know that's such a hard thing to gauge what the hell is that second question how do you even gauge that <laughs> i mean like wouldn't service be like you're paying for like updates and stuff like that because i feel like destiny 2 especially where it's at right now it's not really just that 60 dollars game there was that moment where greg and i were thinking that one weekend of like let's get let's do it Ugh. let's get back into destiny 2 and it was like all right everybody gotta- says this mission is great we went to do it and they're like you have to pay for it yeah like, you have to pay for this you have to pay for this you have to pay for this and it was like all right like like i think of destiny 2 almost more subscription uh not, not monthly i guess but like there's just something more beyond of what it is is just a 60 dollar game you know yeah, I, I feel like I'd give him credit for this one. Can I hear it again? Full way. Bungie will still be independent, and Destiny will be more of a service game and less a $60 game. Yeah, sure. It's just really easy. I mean, what game isn't a service game is my only thing. Yeah. I, and I, I, you know, I was with Fran on earlier ones. I'm not with it here. Just because he went for the easy thing. Got fucked, Fran. Get hey, fucked, Fran. And he's the one that gets to decide. You got fucked on mm-hmm. this one. I wish you there were was right, more. But... We should we should do this again for a future time <laughs> so that we can come back in many years and see what's up. You all killed uh, it. That's incredible. There were so many perfectly. Is it that fucking things. cool? Yeah. It's almost, as if, it's almost as if Tim knew what he was doing. Come on. Yeah. Come on. I appreciate that, Andy. I appreciate that a lot. <laughs> uh, you know what else I appreciate, Andy? Jared Petty. Jared, thank you for Aww. joining us once again on the Kind of Funny Games cast. I hope we can have you again sometime soon. But Either way, where can people find you? People can find me at Petty Comma Jared on Twitter, and people can find me at the Top 100 Games Podcast on Stitcher, on Spotify, on Apple Podcasts, and all the places you listen to podcasts. Why would you want to do that? Well, because it's fun, it's light, it's simple, it's dumb, it's kind of wonderful. It's a silly little show I like, and uh, I could use some listenership. So this community has been really good to me. Um, Top 100 Games Podcast, if you want to pause this for a second and search for it and then come back, uh, and add it to your subscriptions it would mean a lot to me i think it's a good little show it's about the guests not about me it's one of the things i like about it and uh, i hope you'll come and listen and enjoy it there you go now uh, i want to make it about jared just for a little bit longer for the patreon exclusive post show so everyone on patreon.com slash kind of funny game stay tuned for that and for everyone else i love you goodbye